Okay, folks, so I'm just going to do a, a bare bones um, a setup here with a, a coordinator and router in API mode. I highly recommend the video that I that I link to uh, in the uh, in the Git post, um, as that gentleman does a does a great job. He goes into detail. But what I'm going to do is I'll discover I've got the radio that's going to be my coordinator attached to my PC, and I will discover that. API mode is fantastic because you can program your radios remotely. So long as you have any one of them plugged in, you can uh, you can program the others, which is which is great. So if these are new radios or what have you, it doesn't really matter if they're new. First thing I would do is run an update, and you're going to make sure that now you'll notice that I have I really have two different radios here. They're both series two though. Um, and they both are running the um, the uh, Zigbee protocol, so we're fine. So this one I want Zigbee API. I'm going to have the newest, and I'll just run an update, although it doesn't really need to be updated. Okay, so I'm all updated to the default for the, um, the uh, coordinator API. The only thing I'm going to do is set a pan ID. It can be whatever you want, as long as it doesn't conflict with any other network ID, and we'll write that. And that's it. That's all I'm going to change for the coordinator. I'm going to switch my radios out now. Okay, so as you can see, I put the uh, coordinator over here in the uh, attached to the Raspberry Pi via USB. And um, I've put what's going to be the router, the one attached to our Arduino, into my computer. And let's program that one. So I'll do a search. And let's see here. I might, might not find it here. Might have to, oh, there it is. Okay. Let's see, I might have, might have had to wait a second. Um, now, the other thing I should have done, you'll notice I, I didn't. I only made one change on the coordinator. You probably should have changed the name on the coordinator, which I did not. Um, it's a good idea to do so. But let's do this. And again, this one was already programmed for a different network. So what I'll do is... I'm going to default, so I'll go to the default for this, and or you could just do an update. Right? So, what default will do is um, it'll um, whatever profile you have loaded, it'll show you all the changes you made. So you can see everything here are changes that I made, and then you could write those changes. But what I'm going to do is let me uh, let me run an update here, right? So just like this. I'm going to choose update. Now, this one works a little bit differently. You notice I'm not choosing router or coordinator. If you have the same radios, you, um, you know, you'll, you'll do them both relatively the same. You could choose um, router API mode. Um, I just don't have another uh, S version um, available. Um, and, uh, but anyway, so I'm going to update this. And I'll show you how you can do the same thing with this one, though. Okay, so I updated this radio. I have everything back to the defaults, and let's set it up. So I want the same PAN ID. Um, we want channel, uh, channel verification. We'll want that set. Um, let's see here. Could notify when we join, but we don't need to worry about that. I'm going to leave the uh, destination high and low to zero. And what that means is it's going to um, it's going to communicate with whoever is the coordinator in the network. So you just leave that as zero. You can give it a name again. I should have done this for the uh, for the other one. We'll just call this one router. Get rid of that space. Let's see here. Anything else we need? Oh, we need to put this in I API mode because by default. By default, it's not in API mode. The other radio, the actual firmware that you installed was um, coordinary API. And if you had another one of those same S2 radios, you could do um, router API. But this one works a little bit differently. So, oops, I want, I want here. Um, so I'm going to do API enabled one. We'll, uh, we'll write that. You could just write everything at the end. I don't think I wrote. Um, this one here. The reason I don't write everything at the end, you'll notice all these change. Well, I guess, I guess I did change these two. But it's easy to roll your mouse and be in a setting, and you can see, and you accidentally change that setting. 
So I tend to just explicitly write the ones that I want to uh, to write. Okay, and again, you can see I've got all kinds of uh, changes here. That's just from rolling my mouse after having clicked in the... Uh, let's go back to AP, make sure I set that. I did. All right, now, if we come down here a little bit, here is where you'd want this to be, especially if you're going to do the LED. You know, if you're not doing the LED um, uh, video where you're toggling a, um, a pin on the, on the Arduino, you won't need to uh, set this, but I assume you're probably going to do that. So I will set that. And then what I'm going to do is I will set the sample rate to um, a second. And we need to put that in in hex so you can use the little calculator there's a thousand milliseconds and that's the value in hex now there's also a um, IO detection change detection and what you can do is you can set this bit field and it will um, you can say which one of these pins you want to be reported back in our case to the coordinator if there is in fact a change so um, you can look that up look how look up how it works although there's a cool little calculator and all you're doing is turning on the ones that you want to report back so if you wanted dio zero to report back it would be a one if i wanted zero and one it would be a three right and basically what we're doing with um with uh, bit fields here is no combination would ever add up to the others right so if I notice if I go to two, it's a four and it couldn't be a three. You're like, well, it's the third one, but it couldn't be a three because the combination of zero and one are three. So you couldn't use three. And then if I put all of these in, it would be a seven, a very standard programming thing. Um, but I'm just going to leave that at zero and I'll let you guys, uh, I'll let you guys play with those. All right. So that's it. I don't think we have to. And I changed these by accident. I don't need to write those. Right. I guess I could write the name. And that was it. So there wasn't too much to change. Right? We wanted to uh, set the ID and uh, channel verification, make sure that we were in AP mode, depending on the type of um, the type of uh, radio that you're using. So I'm in AP one. And then I just uh, set that uh, DIO zero to uh to be digital input so i could read the state of an arduino pin all right so i'm going to pause this and i'll pop that and actually you know what at this point i'm just going to stop this is uh this part this part is fine this is all you need to do um and then you can go forward with the um the other two uh the other two videos Okay, uh, one more thing. I'm back. <laughs> um, one, uh, I just want to show you one of the nice things about being in API mode is this. Notice I have that router we just set up. I'm going to discover, and I'll discover all of the other radios on the network. And you'll notice that it finds that coordinator. And again, we didn't give it a name, so let's add that. And now what we can do is I'm going to grab the coordinator. And again, that's, that's over here. It's not plugged into the PC at all. That's over here plugged into our Raspberry Pi. And now we can uh, we can give this a, a name and let's just call it coordinator. And we can write that out. Great. Now I'm done.